Welcome to Good Mythical More. KFC doesn't lie to you, but our crew does about KFC items. Let's test our knowledge of the truth. But first, let's check our voicemail. Oh. I'm eating frosted flakes, and they're good. They're better than toasted mini wheats. Toasted mini wheats? You know, I don't even know what those are. Yeah, yeah. Toasted mini The reason mini you wheats. think they're better is because you're eating the toasted ones and not the <laughs> frosted ones. <laughs> yeah. Oh, they taste so toasted. <laughs> All right. You, Better than toasted what mini you get weeds. For trying to be a smart Alec. Speaking of smart Alec, lots of you guys are so smart that you filled out our census. We learned a lot about you. If you want to know uh, what we've learned about you, uh, we'll save that for after this game. If if you're not into that, we're not going to burden you with with the knowledge if you're not ready for and let it. Let me just make sure that this works. Okay. It does work. <laughs> it does work. That's what I won. In case you forgot, that's what I won. I didn't forget. The power. You guys ready to play a game? Yes! Yeah, we're ready. So I'm going to tell you about a KFC item product, like a limited edition thing maybe, something they made that was KFC eyes. Right. And either they made it or we made it up. KFC ya! Have you ever been eating a bucket of chicken and wanted to snap a photo that you could print out instantly? Well, KFC has you covered. Back in 2015, they released a limited edition KFC bucket photo printer that you can use to hold your chicken and get some great greasy memories all at the same time. And their marketing department they do is a lot progressive. Of stuff, man. They do so many uh, things. Yes, you, you know, I wouldn't put anything that past the Colonel. With, with Mario? The Colonel just said, you know what? Just do what you want. I don't, I don't understand it and I don't care. And I'm probably dead. Real. Greasy photos. I'm going to start off with real. Yeah, it's too. real. Yeah. It was called the KFC Memories Bucket, wow. released in Canada during KFC's 60th anniversary. Um, and I don't think it was commercially available. So if you got one, you were extra lucky. Yeah, they probably made like five of them, maybe maybe 10. Is that real chicken on top? That's real chicken. That chicken looks flat. It actually doesn't look like real chicken. It looks like fried pork chops. It looks like chops. a giant nugget. Ooh, man, don't get me started on fried pork chops. Thinly sliced, at a, like a meat and three. Yes, I, yes I, it's I actually- i my mama in the face. It's a fried chicken photo trick. They used fried pork chops. Yeah, right. Uh, is hey, that's, yeah. maybe they got fried pork chops in Canada. As, I don't have that information. As you may or may not know, KFC uses special pressure fryers to create their signature crispy chicken, but with costs upward of $10,000, they're not the most accessible for the average home cook that wants to make their own KFC fried chicken at home. So, in 2013, KFC, or more accurately, Katam Restaurant Supply started selling home kitchen size pressure fryers with the what? KFC logo on them for around 500 bucks. That's smart. But it's not smart because you've got you've paid $10,000 for this machine and you want to get people to come into your restaurant and eat it, not sell and letting them figure out they can do it at home? No. That's not a smart. That's not a smart play. I was distracted by the the uh, posture mirroring I, I, I'd like for there I, to be a study on I've been, I've been doing that lately. On I, our I, posture mirror. I read a book about how in order to relate to people, you should do So that's what I've been doing every time you do something. Have you not noticed? No, I did it to you. Well, yeah, because you cause, because I did it to you first. I've been mirroring your posture so much that now you're mirroring mine. Well, whose who's forearms are sexier? Can we change this episode? <laughs> um, I can't remember the question, but I think that there's two in a row, yes. I think this is fake for the reasons I have already established. It's fake. Yeah, yeah. it doesn't make any sense. Yeah, you can't. But the order, little like you can't give people the secret restaurant thing. supply thing was really no. It's it's just like a well. George Foreman grill. I mean, I, George I Foreman know. doesn't have a restaurant where he's selling a bunch of chicken. Yeah, but it's not the eleven herbs and spices. It's just the pressure cooker, and everybody knows they pressure cook their here's original. The, here's the thing, Link. Original. They make a big deal out of the eleven herbs and spices, but it's really like you're going to see those eleven herbs and spices in most fried chicken recipes. My nana um, had a like pressure cooker. Network. I got you. She had a pressure cooker. She didn't pay five hundred dollars for it either, right? But you put that logo on there. How about Chickendales? 
<laughs> yes, you heard that right. In 2019, KFC collaborated with the Chippendales to create a very peculiar yet sexy campaign of appreciation for all moms on Mother's Day. With a scantily clad Colonel Sanders leading the way, the Chickendales shared their love for moms while ripping apart their clothes and showing off as much as the censors would allow. What year? 2019. This happened. 2019 was the year of uh, the, the, the stretch for the KFC. Chickendales? They were doing so many things and they were experimenting so it's many It's tempting, ways. but no. The Chickendales are... Real, and here's a snippet of the commercial without any music because that would be too sexy and also because we're not allowed to play the music. <laughs> oh, I remember this. Yeah, okay, right, the Chickendales. Oh, shoot. This is, you know, this is someone's dream. You realize that the idea that the Colonel would look like that and that that man could give you fried chicken well, this is the precursor to the thing you were talking about with uh, Mario Lopez. This is what his right, body exactly. looks like. This is right? how. This is how. He, how how does, does it feel to be the coolest mom in the world? The world. Oh, okay, I was like, <laughs> what am I supposed to look at? Okay. Okay. Now it's gotten stupid. Yeah. Now it's like fruit of the loom. All right. What? Well, just one criticism, and it's a deal breaker. They're not greasy. Yeah, they they should, were they, really dry. They should have been super greased. They up. gotta be greased up. That was missed oh, it opportunity. It should have been oiled up, oiled down. Be finger licking, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. They Do you know what discussion. you're saying? <laughs> <laughs> I'm musicizing it, man. They had the discussion. Should the men be greasy? And they weren't. They made the yeah, wrong choice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, we're, so, we're, so did I, apparently. We're giving that a thumbs down. <laughs> that's what we're doing. The world's smallest KFC was a fully functioning restaurant that patrons could visit and receive tiny $5 fill-ups that could fit in the palm of their hand. With the entire building standing just over three feet tall, customers had to lay down on their stomachs to be able to see through the front door and order their food. $5, that's, I, that's the part you got I'm wrong. just starting to think everything is, is true. Except for the one that was false. I don't think they did this because I'm just thinking of the logistics and, and they're, they're a nightmare. Listen, they only did it for 10 people. They did it for the gram. Did it say for 10 people? No. no. I did. But, yeah, it's, it's real. It was a, a pop-up in Portland, because of course, yeah. um, and all the food was tiny and you edible. You have a video of that? I don't think so. Nope, so you missed it. You had your chance and it went away. Kind of like all the merch at Ooh, mythical com. Good transition. When it's there, you have a chance to buy it. And then when it's gone, it's gone. Right. Um, but then there's this period of time where it's about to go away and we call that, it's your last chance to get it and we put it in a section called the last chance section of mythical.com. Pretty smart if you ask me. Don't hesitate because the items will go away. Right, but we give you one last chance. You see how that works? And we've done it. Okay, I'm gonna give you one more. And yeah, then we, we can gotta get in into that some census. census data. After a realization that National Wing Day and National Lipstick Day are both on July 14th, 17th. 29th, of course, KFC did a special release of a hot wing flavored lipstick called Bucket Red Number 11 Lipstick. The product claimed to be completely wing proof and could stand the messiest of food eating. There's a lot of research that went into this one if it's made up. I mean, you gotta know about wing day and lip day, what is it? I just got bored and you're confused. Lipstick. That's National all I lipstick. need to know. I think it's, I think it's uh, KFC, yeah. Too many things, yeah, too many things to keep up with. Oh, it's real. It was well, everything's real. In the UK last year. They're desperate, man. Um, they're, they're creative. And it yeah. was only given to sele a select 400 members of the Colonel Club. They're into that. How do you get into the Colonel Club? <laughs> oh, the Colonel Club. Sign me up. Mm. Okay. I bet we could do a Mythical Society Colonel Club collab. Thank you to all of you who responded to the Mythical Census second one we've ever done. We learn something new every time, but what? Let's find out together. We've got some highlights here. We've not seen this except in passing so far. We, we're gonna take the risk and, and process it verbally in your presence. Over 79,000 of you 
thank you, participated in this. How old are y'all? You know what? It's it's all we could almost say you could round up to eighty thousand. You know what? Eighty thousand of you. Nearly eighty thousand of you. So how old are y'all? Well, thirty nine point nine percent of y'all are twenty-five to thirty-four. That is the highest demographic that we have, followed closely with 37.45% are 18 to 24. That means that most of you are 18 to 34. Now, on the upper end of that, we got about, uh, you know. Adults. 35 and over, it's about 14% total. That's, that's the next one, so we don't go down to, does this, does this no, In 13 to 17, 8%. So there, there are still some, yeah, you're some teenagers. There are but, some teenagers. But the younger you get, the more unlikely you are to fill out a census. You Especially think, yeah. if you call it a census. Can I say the most shocking thing I about think. this question is but, that zero people skipped this question. Every single person answered this question. Do you know what the odds are of that happening? Well, we're gonna have to conduct another survey to find out. Wow, what are the chances that you'll skip this question? A survey with statisticians only, Stevie. hundred percent. Yes. Zero yes. percent. Uh, mm -hmm. What's your relationship status? Well, most of you are single. I mean, it's just gonna be honest with you. I mean, 43.5% of y'all are single. Okay. And listen, that's good, good for you. Most people are single. You know what, you have options. 31% of you are in a relationship of sorts. 24% okay. of you are married. Okay. 1.52% of you are divorced. Did my dad fill out this survey? Because that might just be all him. <laughs> <laughs> like times three. 1.5, hey, listen. My to, dad will go through a wife, I'll tell you. To, <laughs> you might need to work on a new way to say that. Uh, <laughs> What, to the one point five two percent of y'all who are divorced, thank you. Not thank you for getting divorced. Just thank you for watching. You know. Hopefully you know the show. Hopefully greener. the show. But if you're divorced, you're also been single. So I wonder if some people who are so, they're so divorced they just consider themselves single because that's that's what I would be. I would just be, I wouldn't call, you don't call, you don't walk around calling yourself divorced, you call yourself single. But if you're asked a question on a survey and divorce is an option and you are divorced, you usually say, yeah, I'm divorced, but hey, I'm also single, come on, give me a break. The only, is that the only one that can be both? Do you have children? Nobody skipped this question either. Yeah. Well, it's it's pretty easy to know, you know? You either do or you don't, right? A sign of the times, 82% of you guys don't have kids. I mean, listen. You heard. Speaking of census, you 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 heard about the the the, the U.S. census data. We're not having enough babies. I mean, we're beginning to, to decline. No, 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 no. I mean, no. this is. I mean, this is the end of things. The economy is going to shrink. It's going to be oh. a reverse pyramid. All very few young people are going to be trying to take care of a lot of old people. I hate it for you if you're young. You should be getting pregnant as young as possible. No, 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 no. Well, hold on. Isn't that the message I'm going for? Uh, 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 uh. We need more teen pregnancy. <laughs> Because <laughs> it works the other way. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I thought you were trying to make the fake uh, phone noises at first, and I was like, "Link, oh. that is my thing. Who's calling?" Oh no, I was I, I was gonna make a noise in order to just to kind of drown him out, <laughs> and it was a phone noise at first, and then I was like, "Oh, I could chicken." Yeah, yeah, I could chicken. Um. I watched the David Attenborough thing, mm -hmm. um, the one where it's like over the course of his lifetime, how the earth has changed. And basically his ending point is let's let's procreate less. Let's make less humans. Well. And he had a really positive spin on it. I don't it. know if he understands the way the economy works. <laughs> he knows how the earth works. So if, hey, if you don't wanna have kids, don't. That's great. I agree with that. I, I, I side with Attenborough on this. I just like, I just like the the comedy that comes out of asking for more teen pregnancy, just to be clear. Uh, you know I mean, what? But it, if you look at the demo, if, if you match that with like the age group thing, it is a, it is a little interesting, because it's not like, well, the, 
those who can... We got a lot of people who are adults, like the majority, right. like over 80% of the audience is a, is a legal adult, but yet 80% of them They're don't have children. They're of childbearing age. And uh, congratulations to the 18% of you who are either, you have kids or you're expecting. Okay. Okay. Congratulations. Uh, what are your favorite types of television movies and or other video content? Oh, now we're into it. So this, this is genres? Yeah. Now, I mean, of course, 91% of you said comedy. Well, of course. I mean, I mean think, think about the joke I just made about teen pregnancy. I mean, you've got great taste. Uh, Lily told me yesterday, I don't know how this came up in conversation, but she was like, I just, I've had it with white guy comedians, except for you, Dad. <laughs> <laughs> I, I was just glad that she considered me a yeah, comedian. We have had our moment in the sun. We're holding on real hard, though. Yeah, she, I've uh, had it with I've had it with those comedians who are white guys. Um, I get it. I I really do. Fifty seven point six percent of you are really into action and adventure, which that makes sense because of our forearms. You know, oh yeah, yeah. Like that. I mean, we, like, we talked about I mean, that earlier. I, I just yeah. gotta say, mine's, mine's <laughs> Shorter, but it's definitely shorter. It's, it didn't work for me. It's definitely, but look at that right little, there. It seems no, a little meaty. But look at that right there. That elbow, man. Bring, bring. <laughs> Hello. Hello. All right. What's the third? <laughs> Stevie's uncomfy. <laughs> no. What was no, the third one? No, it's just one? that we talk about it so much off camera. You know, yeah, at yeah, this yeah, point, you can't it's just she can't Shut up about our. Forearms. I don't like the vein in it. No, like, the, that no, makes vein, me... vascularity is good. That's ugh. you. Ugh. Want, you want that. Uh, Fifty-one percent. I literally got a little nauseous. In the sci-fi, uh, nerds. <laughs> Which of these is your hey, hey, twinkle thingies like that one? Which of these is your top destination for entertainment content and shows? Well, not surprising. Sixty-four point eight percent of you, YouTube is your number one go-to destination. Now, just a, just a quick survey. Of this is a self-fulfilling prophecy. Everybody in here. Raise your hand if YouTube is your number one destination for entertainment in this room, crew. Raise one finger and then stick it up your Chris, own butt. We got no. one. Chris, we got, really? We got one. We got. Okay. We got. Don't touch my mic anymore. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and it, but I mean, how? <laughs> no, I mean, like, is it? I mean, don't feel obligated to only watch us. Is no, that what it you is? just you you watch YouTube videos. You find yourself sitting down and watching YouTube videos. It's easy. It's not middle. If I'm bored, I can just start skipping real fast. Yeah, you can yeah. skip right through it. And what what are you what are you into? A whole bunch of different things. Per personality based stuff or like? No, usually like I'm really into learning. Learning. <laughs> yeah, he's into learning. Okay, yeah, that's that's what I was thinking. So like, there's like the you're expanding your your mind. You're you're learning stuff. Yeah. yeah. Right, okay, okay, can't criticize that publicly. Now, followed, I mean, the next thing, really the only thing that even pinged at all was the streaming services, Twenty, basically 29%, but still less than half. And I would say that- I love a good stream. I would say that everyone else in here would probably, if, if streaming services are your number one source of entertainment, raise your hand. Everybody in here, yeah. We're just, just that's just- stop, stop making people raise their hands. That, yeah, no, no. It's but just no. like- no, I'm practicing for a uh, speech that I'm gonna do. Oh God! And next thing you know, you're gonna raise be... your hand if you drove more than ten miles. It's like that kind of thing. I'm just. I want to wanna... turn to your left and massage somebody's uh, yeah, shoulders. Yeah, 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 yeah. Whisper this. Hey, turn to the guy next to you and say, "Whoa, whoa, that's a big deal." <laughs> that was that what? was something. He's a smart one. <laughs> no. I, Is this a TED talk? If you come from where we come from in our background, and you've been to like. Uh, Lots of conferences. There's that was like a that was a go to. It was like turn to the person next to you and touch them. And what? No, it wasn't always touching. It was saying things. No, yeah. Turn to the person next to you and say amen. Yeah. Amen. But the thing is, you're. Turn I'm trying to bring that back. But but raise but, your hand if you want to say amen. <laughs> that the, the, the doesn't turn, really work. Turn to the person next to you and say amen doesn't work because let's do it. Amen. amen. See, it's like yes. you're, you're amen in the yeah. back of somebody's head. Yeah. Right. Um, if your first. If the first place you go for entertainment is Instagram, I mean, I know it might be the majority of your time, but at least in your mind, you don't think that, and that's all that really matters. No, third place is TikTok, and I that makes sense. I like that. Yeah. I, I firmly you know, agree with that. I'm a Twitch guy. Snapchat <laughs> makes sense because there's serious stuff, but to see, I'm my old is showing. Which of these would you like to see Rhett and Link or Mythical create? Okay, this is interesting. Read the the um, the options for this first in no, in in a, in a clandestine order. 
a new live show or tour, a new YouTube channel, a new movie or documentary, a new podcast, a new book, a new series on a traditional TV network like NBC, ABC, CBS, etc., or a new series on a streaming network like Netflix, Hulu, Amazon Prime, etc. So far and away, number one answer, 41% of you said you want to see us make a series on a streaming network. Second is YouTube. Uh, second, is, yeah, with 23.3% uh, is a new YouTube channel uh, or show. That's good because that's what we want to do too. Yeah, we are tr as we've established. And I, I elsewhere, think we're trying hard. And maybe, you, maybe you know that if you listen to Ear Biscuits, you know this is what we want. So it's like you want what we want. We all want the same thing. That way, we can want the same thing. And if we both want the same thing, and we set our intention on it, and you turn next to the person next to you and say, "Amen," raise your hand, and if you've come from ten or more miles away, it will happen. How long, comedy, you see that? 91% of them are into that, so yeah. I'm trying to be funny. Yeah. How long have you been watching Good Mythical Morning? Now this is disturbing. What? <laughs> <laughs> no, what? It could be, I mean, because the majority, the 44%, for five to 10 years. So we're talking the long, long haulers. haulers. Uh, and then 41%, two to five years. So. 85% of you have been watching for at least two years. Does that mean we're just not making any new fans? Um, well, it maybe not at the maybe not at the rate that we would like, or maybe we're maybe people who are long-term fans are, are more likely, likely to, to fill, fill out, out a, a survey. I mean, we bribed you with a discount to the store. Raise so your hand like, if that's true of you. I mean, ten percent a year or so. I'm new this year, 4%. 4%. It was also phrased as a statement, but you kind of asked if you're it as a question. Yeah, if you're new this year. I'm new this year? <laughs> I think. I'm I not just good don't. with time. Yeah, the I mean, I, it's just, we're learning the most about the people who've been around longer. You're, you're, you're committed to the, to the show, to the, to the world. Yeah, thank you for being here. To the us. Here's some, we got some comments oh. here. Uh, this people, we asked them, please tell us in your own words why you watch Good Mythical Morning. It's funny, it's fun. Makes my days better when I watch first thing in the morning. Me and my husband bond over watching it. I don't know why I read it like a little apologetic. That's how I, this is how I thought about it. You were just talking. I like to know that people are watching together, except that's less views. Yeah. Well, if you, if you watch as a family, everybody gets a screen. That's what I say, okay? Mute them and sync them. Mute them and sync them. Well, mute them or sync them. If you sync them, you don't need to mute them, but that's hard to do. Yeah, right. Uh, you want me to read one of these? I do. Stevie is bomb. Stevie, bing, you, bing. Stevie you got a fan. <laughs> Chase is adorable. Well, there you go. And Carney worked at Hot Dog on a Stick. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, P.S. All cast members are fabulous. Okay. Well, keeping with that theme. To varying degrees, I'd probably. Keeping with that theme, sure. literally, the answer was just Josh and Trevor. <laughs> That's why you watch Good Mythical Morning. Well, they, I mean, you can, you, know, to, you can watch Mythical Kitchen and get a lot more yeah. of them. We got some Mythical Kitchen data. We're not going to get into that here, except uh, for that one, which, which must be an outlier. Uh, I've been watching it for so long. It's just like comfort food. I always know that I'm gonna watch something entertaining because I just enjoy Rhett and Link as people. Even though I've watched almost every episode of GMM ever, I still get excited when I see a new video popping on my subscription feed. Well, That's what, that, that feels good. That's nice to hear. I came for the food content originally and stayed for the genuine lifelong friendship. I was thinking about that. I mean, that's basically like, you know, click for the food, stay for the friendship. That could be our slogan. But now. they stayed for other reasons, including quirky realness. Quirky realness. And fun slash random content made by creators who, who really seem to care about their audience, their crew, and aren't afraid to be themselves. We need to put this on a poster. You know how That's like a lot of words. Like like the like indie films who go to like film festivals, they make posters. We haven't made a good mythical morning poster in a Came while. Came for the food, stay we for need the to friendship. Put, we need to we need to put some quotes on it, but they all need to be really off. 
Yeah. Raise your hand if you came for the food. Turn to the person next to you and say, I came for the friendship. <laughs> <laughs> stayed for the put, friendship. Put, put that on, I stayed for the friendship. That's a t-shirt right there. Uh, I mostly watch Mythical Kitchen. Huh, here's one. <laughs> okay. But I check up on GMM episodes occasionally. Check Both Rhett and Link are enjoyable, but it isn't my main interest. Mm. <laughs> Me neither. Uh, this is great to hear, you know? Um, there's plenty of people who like us. We, you know, I want people to like Mythical Kitchen more than they like us. I want right. Mythical Kitchen to have its own audience. Well, the one, the, some of the data was, I think it was, why do you watch Mythical Kitchen? So we're, you know, there's like, do you watch for entertainment or do you watch for the food and, um, or the forearms? Or the forearms. Yeah, I mean, I'm not gonna put. We shouldn't put Josh's forearms on here next to ours. And no, we're having a contest. No, 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 no. Don't no, ever no, let. No, don't no, ever no, fall no. into that trap. <laughs> because I've been a fan since 2014, it's become a tradition to not miss an episode. Memories of watching older episodes when they were released have sentimental value. Love seeing the mythical crew grow and evolve, and I'm not planning to stop liking you. Don't. Don't even think about it. Yeah, if you don't you get like to a point where it's just autopilot. Here's the thing: you do need to plan if you're going to stop liking us. You gotta, you got. If you're going to jump this ship, you got to get on another one. So don't just do it willy nilly. Have a plan in place. And good luck with that. It's like having a fire escape. Have you seen what else is out there? Yeah, you've been on YouTube lately. I mean, the only person here is Chris. You just learn stuff. <laughs> uh, <laughs> this one says. All right, why you watch Good Mythical Morning? Good writing and prep behind okay hosts. Yeah, yeah, I'm, I don't disagree. So at least one of the writers or producers took the census. <laughs> okay hosts. Okay hosts. GMM is a show that my whole family enjoys. One of the first inappropriate things my daughter ever repeated was, will it penis? <laughs> Good for her. Okay. And the answer to that question is, well, it's, it's up to you. <laughs> <clears throat> and finally, uh, watch Good Mythical Morning because it's lighthearted, wholesome, funny, and overall very feel good. I love how Rhett and Link's friendship and their connections, relationships with the rest of the off-screen GMM crew members feels so genuine, even through the screen. Oh. As someone who struggles with depression and anxiety, watching GMM is a very easy way to take my mind off everything in the real world and laugh for a bit. We're honored. Uh, I have really enjoyed watching everyone on the show grow into such genuine, kind-hearted people. How did you guys start? Yeah, they were a bunch of jerks. Um, as someone who has watched the show for a very long time, uh, I really think GMM is doing so much good for people in a world that can sometimes seem so overwhelming and it feels good to be part of it as a mythical beast. That's right. Yeah, it means a We're lot. We're in this together. So uh, it's encouraging that this is your experience and that uh, you know you think that we're real people. Because um, sometimes I realize that. It's like, yeah. oh, we're, we're, pe we're people. Right, it means the hologram program is working. Yeah. Grab some discontinued items before they're gone forever. Check out our last chance section at mythical.com.